Hi, for this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to download and install WordPress on your web server site even if you don't have an easy one button click. So let's go ahead to WordPress.org and we're going to find a page that says Download WordPress 3.4. At the time of this recording, 3.4 is the latest version. So I'm going to go ahead and click to download and I'm going to tell it that I want a zip file and click download WordPress 3.4. I'm going to save the file and then I'm going to double click and open the folder where the file was saved and it's in my download folder. I'm going to minimize that screen and then I'm going to go into my Bluehost cPanel. I'm going to scroll down to my file manager and double click and I'm going to put this into the web root. Once I'm in the web root folder, I'm going to click on new folder and I'm going to create a new folder called manually because this is where I'm manually putting in the WordPress and click on create folder and now it pops up in my cPanel and this is in my root file. Next I'm going to reopen the folder where I had saved my WordPress. I'm going to right click and I'm going to tell it to go into WinZip and I'm going to extract it into a folder that has my name, downloads, and WordPress. I like to arrange my files by date modified when I'm doing a job like this. Once I've got it here, I'm going to right click again and I'm going to click on add to wordpress.zip and it's going to add all of those files to a new folder called WordPress and a folder will sh pop up showing my original size and my compressed size and I'm going to click OK and then get out of these folders. So once I've got that file saved into a zip folder I'm going to click on my manually folder and I'm going to click upload and I'm going to find the zipped folder that I just made. So I'm going to click on WordPress and I'm going to tell it open and it's going to go ahead and add that whole series of files that are in that folder onto my web server in the manually folder. So while that's going, it's going to take a while, let's go back into my Bluehost cPanel and now we're going to build a database. The database is going to be under my SQL databases. Let me just find it right here. There it is. My SQL databases. I'm going to double click on that. and I'm going to put the name of the new database in as manually and click on create database. That database has been made so I'm going to click on go back and I'm going to go across this database that I made right click and I'm going to open up my notepad plus plus and I'm just going to go ahead open up a new folder and paste that in as the database name and I'm going to type in there that that's the new database name. Next I'm going to add a new user. Then it's going to ask you to create a username and I'm just going to make this MLab2. Now you can only use up to seven letters or numbers so you want to make it a good one. Then we're going to click on password generator. Once it comes up with a password we're going to copy it and we're going to paste that into our notepad plus plus file just so we know that we've got it someplace that it's definitely correct. And then I'm going to tell it that I've copied the password to a safe place and to use the password. And I'm going to tell it to create the user. So it's now added this user and this password and I'm going to click go back. Now I'm going to scroll down again and I'm going to add this user to a database. So the user is the MLab2 and I want to add this to the manually database that I just created that is now having all of my files downloaded to it and click add. The next page is going to ask for which privileges you want to give this user. Since this user is me, I'm going to click on all privileges, but you can check any or all of these if you'd like to and click make changes and click go back. Now if you scroll down to our databases, you can see that in my manually folder, MLab2 is a user. If you want to get rid of any of these usernames, you can just click on the X. Or if you want to get rid of the whole database, just click on Delete Database. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go head back out to our cPanel. Now I'm going to check my third tab, which shows how much progress has been made on uploading those files. And as you can see, I am now complete. So I'm going to X out of the third tab go back into my second tab and it looks empty but if you click on reload 
it'll go ahead and show us all of the files that are in there. So now I'm going to click on the WordPress.zip file and I'm going to tell it to extract, which is right up here on the right. And this is where I'd like to extract it to, so I'm going to click on Extract Files. This will show me all of the files that came out, and I'm going to click Close. And then again, I'm going to click Reload. And there they all are, everything from my admin and content pages all the way down. So now my WordPress page is uploaded to my web server. So now to go ahead and install it, I'm going to make a new tab and I'm going to type into here WordPress Tutorial Hub dot com backslash manually because that's the name of the folder and click enter. Once you type in the name of your website, backslash, and the name of the new folder you just added or database, you're going to come to this screen that says there doesn't seem to be a wp-config.php file. And then it's going to put up a button for you to create a configuration file, and we'll do that now. This takes you to the WordPress page, and it's going to ask you for some information about the database name, username, password, host, and the table prefix. Now we're going to go to the bottom and click Let's Go. So it's going to ask us for our database name. So we're going to go in and we're going to change the database names. The database name is going to be straight from our Word file where we copied and pasted it earlier. Then our username, which is going to the be, be the beginning, underscore, and then our username. Our password, which we've also saved in Notepad and we're going to leave localhost in the table prefix the same and click submit. And it takes us to a success screen and we're going to click on run the install. Now it's going to ask my site title. And my site title for this will be WordPress Tutorial Hub. The username we're going to leave is admin right now and then it wants us to put in a password. Then it's going to ask for an email so once you hit the install button at the bottom of the screen, it's going to go ahead and take you through the install process. And then when you go to look on your website, you'll see that it takes you to the WP admin. So mine is wordpresstutorialhub.com backslash manually backslash WP admin. And it will ask me to go ahead and sign in with the username admin and then the password that I put in earlier. So that will allow me to get in and start building my WordPress site. So I hope that this was useful to you and I know that you're going to have a lot of fun with this. So I'll see you at the next tutorial.